Ding, ding. Welcome back, everybody, to the Jen Julian Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Me Undies. Did you guys know that Me Undies makes the world's most comfortable, not underwear, but also lounge pants and tees? You guys know about their underwear, okay? But their lounge pants are made from the same micromodal fabric as their Me Undies, just three times softer than cotton. Amazing. Honestly, I love sleeping in them. You should check it out. Uh, 100%, 100% satisfaction guarantee. Right now, get your 15% off your first order. Uh, Free shipping and 100% satisfaction, guys. So if you don't like it for whatever reason, you get your money back. Me undies. That's M E U N D I E S dot com slash Jenna Julian. Also, guys, the skim, the way to educate yourself every day, uh, so you don't have to wade through the nonsense all over the internet. The skim is a newsletter that comes to your email inbox completely free with the top news stories going on in the world right now. Go to the skim. That's T H E S K I M M. That's two M's dot com slash Jenna Julian. And subscribe. It's completely free. Also, when you subscribe, you're going to be entering yourself to win a $250 Visa gift card. Also, guys, if you want to shop for clothes, ThreadUp is the way to do it. They have secondhand clothes, uh, clothing options from some of the top brands with up to 90% off retail price. Solid condition, wearable, and really affordable. Go to thredup.com slash Jenna Julian. That's threadup.com slash Jenna Julian for an extra 30% off your already discounted order. Bam. The skim just made me realize that, like, I was watching an episode of Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders, and you know how they have those, like, fake media training? Um, oh, like, describe that to me. Yeah, my... so Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders making the team is one of my favorite shows. It, it's brutal. They're brutal to those girls. But so they're, they're the cheerleaders for the Dallas Cowboys, and the whole season is just about who makes the team and blah, blah, blah. And uh, one of the exercises that they put them through is they go through this like media training where they have to, you know, be in front of a camera and answer some questions that an interviewer asks them. And they set them up with like a fake. In- it's not even real. Like, it's they're fake. not even it's live. Just, it's going uh, nowhere. Yeah. And they give them these like layup questions like how's training camp been for you? And, you know, what do you think about football in general? <laughs> <laughs> and this... uh one girl who's like doing really well in training camp, a rookie, the woman was like, uh, you know, what do you think about the me too movement? And like as visible women as Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, do you think it's a cheerleaders place to be involved or speak up or anything about that? She goes, I don't know what that is. And she got cut (laughs) for that. And Finn glass, when she went into the office, the coach, uh, she was like, uh, you know, I really, uh, she's like, where are you getting your news? And she goes, Instagram. And uh, you know what could have really helped her out? Because she was like, Where sh- what should I do? Should I listen to podcasts for news? Like, what should I do? She should have just gotten this. She should have just gotten this. Game. That was the that was the best <laughs> sponsor intro that's ever been done on the show. And you did it. Thank you, meet. So if you're considering <laughs> trying out for the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, don't even think about getting that uni on until you sign up for the skim. Okay. That's the only re- that's the literally only reason I agree with Finn Glass cutting someone on that show. The rest of them are nonsense. Well, yeah, I mean, she literally just was like, "I'm speechless," and she, was she didn't like, know what do the you, Me Too movement was. Do you know about anything <clears throat> that's going on? And she's like, "I guess I don't know." And and she was just like, "I'm I have no words." So don't get your news from Instagram, or else you're going to be made a fool of in the Dallas Cowboys. Chili. How can you get news from Instagram? I don't. I don't think that's really a thing. I mean, that's a skill in and of itself. (laughs) Like, where did you find the news news part of Instagram? (laughs) Does she have the beta for like the next Instagram or something? I don't know. She's a young girl. Like, I understand why if you're the the head of that organization, you can't in good faith hire a young woman that hasn't heard of that and then risk the chance that she goes out there and says that publicly. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's bad. And then it reflects really badly on their organization. Yeah. I get it. But still, she got cut just for not knowing what's going on. She literally just needed to sign up for the skim and she would have been on the football field right now, living (laughs) her dreams. It's too bad. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, if I'm hiring... I and I ask someone what the Me Too movement is, and they say, "I don't know. I haven't seen that news on Instagram." I'm gonna say, <laughs> "Maybe check your news sources next time and get the skim." But the weird thing is, I would be hiring for the skim. I work for the skim. They were interviewing to work for the skim in that scenario. 
So, Julian, briefly. That's my dream job. Briefly, what are your thoughts on the Connor Khabib fight? I want to work night? for the skim. Okay. You can. All right. You... Reach high and jump even higher. That's what they say. Okay. At the skim. That's what we say at the skim. I work there now. <laughs> you fired yourself? No, I got a job. So, are you quitting like the podcast and like the Twitch stream? No, or... it's my side work. Oh, you got to do the side gotta work. Got to do the side gotta work. Got to do the side work. Okay. I just got promoted. To what? Floor manager. Wow. The skim has a lot of floors. I manage all of them. Watch the skim drops us as a sponsor now because you've because I claim to work falsely for them. claim to work for them. <laughs> Hire me, please. <laughs> I don't actually work for you. Hire me. Hmm. I'm looking for some side work. Okay, so briefly, our thoughts on the Khabib Connor. Yeah, just because we didn't want to <clears throat> do a whole podcast about it because yeah. I know some of you guys are really over that stuff. But. Which is fair. Um, if you didn't know, there was a big a UFC fight this weekend. Connor McGregor fought <sighs> Khabib Nurmagomedov, uh, and it was weird it was weird it was a good fight um and then there was sort of like a miniature brawl right after the fight which just like kind of blows as like an mma fan it's like you never want to see that because immediately everyone's reactions is like damn this sport is vicious and stupid Mm -hmm. you know um uh, i don't know i my thoughts on the fight was uh khabib did exactly what he needed to do to beat a guy like connor and uh, there's there's people who are like wow khabib's a boring fighter but uh, by the way it's not going to take long um we have something else planned for today just look at the title um (laughs) for those who have watched khabib which uh, weirdly a lot of people didn't know about khabib you know outside of the mma fan world but like he's been tearing it up for years he's He's undefeated had 26 wins going into that fight yeah he's, he's an absolute animal but he doesn't win fights by laying and praying that's like a term they use for wrestlers who just like take you down and hold you down and win the fight there was a clear strategy that was his strategy, yes, and that is definitely one of his strengths. He's like a bear; he can hold you down. But and he holds the record for most takedowns in a single. Was it five round fight or three round fight for twenty one takedowns? Like that's so stupid. His goal is to get you on the ground, and especially in Connor's big rounds one and two, where he his, will knock you yeah. out. Khabib already had him on the ground, and it's one so... of which was via a strike to the face. Yeah, and then he got him down after that. All good points. Connor has never finished someone outside of the second round. So he neutralized Connor, put him on his back for the first two rounds. Right, which we know that that's when the crowd boos and yeah. everyone doesn't yeah. like it. But he literally had his legs wrapped up. Like it was a strategy and he executed it incredibly and well. as boring as it might have looked, that is so incredibly hard to do against a guy like Connor who's athletic like Connor. It's high level grappling. High level <laughs> grappling. It looks boring. I get it. Uh, but not, my point was Khabib isn't that fighter. Like he destroys people. He knocks them out. He submits them. He like gets them to the ground, has some of the most terrifying ground and pound mm-hmm. that that anyone has ever dealt with. So yes, like it was maybe for most people like, oh, this, I want to see them stand up and punch. You know, they did for a little bit. Khabib, hats off, like amazing, amazing fight. He but fought to win. But that's not the he... sport. <laughs> you don't get to see people stand up and strike each other unless it's two strikers fighting against each other. The sport Go watch is mixed martial arts. Go watch Muay Thai. If kickboxing. you don't want to see grappling, stop booing when they're on the ground and he's submitting him. <laughs> it's a concept that <laughs> MMA fans don't understand. They well, want... because they love Connor's attitude yeah. and his fucking judge, and they want to see him <clears throat> get in there and judge it up. Then, then watch Connor fight fucking one of the Diaz's again. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm down for that. But... They want to see a street fight with some bad attitudes, but that doesn't always happen no. because, unfortunately, you have to fight the other athletes, some of which are grapplers. Mixed martial, martial arts. arts. Kermit's licking the floor in the closet, just letting everybody know at home. Uh, after the fight, it was just kind of like gross. Um, basically, Khabib's team, well, Khabib jumped the fence and went for Dylan Dennis, who's a, a cornerman and a grappler himself of Conor McGregor. Dylan had been talking a lot of shit to Khabib and his team. So Khabib jumped over the fence and just like saw red and just attacked him. And then meanwhile, Khabib's team jumped the fence into the cage and sort of attacked Connor when he was like kind of defenseless, which was shitty. Um, The whole thing was shitty. I don't even think there's really a need to get into it. Like there was a lot of shitty things leading up to this fight. Connor isn't blameless in this whole situation. You know, he's the whole bus incident where he broke the window of the bus with a dolly and hurt some people. And said the things he said regardless the, about religion about religion Khabib's father yeah and like a lot of you know a lot of people don't understand you know about politics yeah about politics but like you're not you don't understand what it's like to be from a place that you're not from like Khabib said he said where I'm from mm-hmm. like we don't take that ever lightly ever like if someone insults my family my religion my country 
all bets are off. Like yeah, this isn't a sport not, anymore. To him, that's not promoting the fight. Yeah, that's... yeah. And to Connor, he's he's doing what he does best. Which, which is Dana like, White has chalked all of these things up to <clears throat> saying bad things and trash talking and promoting yeah. a fight. Which, again, like two wrongs don't make a right is like the biggest takeaway from all this. Like Connor mm-hmm. did wrong, Khabib did wrong. None of it's right. Like it's right. just you know. Well, so I have a couple questions for you. Yeah. And I don't think that you have the answers because I don't think anyone has the answers. But what we talked about last night with Mark and everything. So they used the bus footage where Conor McGregor threw the dolly into the bus, which resulted in Michael Chiesa getting hurt, and he privately sued Conor for that because he missed a fight for that. He's currently in the middle of a lawsuit. Yeah, Yeah. and Khabib was on that bus, right? Mm, Yeah, or Khabib's teammate. Right, yeah, Yeah. somebody. And uh, that was ugly and nasty. Mm -hmm. And they used that footage to promote the fight. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Dana has any sort of level of responsibility for profiting off of and encouraging that type of behavior? And then suddenly when it it boils down to the safety of everyone inside that arena, when Khabib decides to jump the fence and incite a brawl, basically, do you think that any of that is Dana's responsibility? Yes, I do. A hundred percent. And I think he'll never admit to it because he's Dana. And it's like in this situation, he's he's kind of removing himself from the situation he's like okay let's see what the commission says like let's let's let the penalties happen right but in reality if you don't use the bus footage in a promotion in a promotional video leading to a fight then the, wh- what that does is it takes away that situation as something that's even remotely okay in the fighter's eyes mm-hmm. or the team's eyes because, but there, because were no, they included, there were no consequences for Connor. there were no consequences for well there, w- that we know of i mean obviously he probably had to deal with some legal situations and maybe some but fees. it's not like he got no, suspended there was no ufc fight. consequences for connor right, that's what I'm saying. so the fact that the ufc didn't didn't penalize connor for throwing a dolly through a bus window and hurting people and basically causing it's battery right it's an aggravated assault and battery to an extent you're including that situation to promote a fight you're by doing that, you're saying, okay, well, this is... You're being complicit. You're being complicit, and you're also normalizing that sort of thing. So then when Khabib jumped the fence, right, in Khabib's Dana mind, said, he's like, this this is going to be used in the next promo video. Right. I don't care. Well, because Dana said, I would <clears throat> use it again because it's, quote, part of the story. Yeah, and I, Dana is... a there's So much of what he does is just brilliant, and I respect the hell out of him. But at the same time, I know that sometimes when, when his, you know, he's... You know, he's being held to the fire. He's ne- he's never going to give it up. He's never going to just be like, yeah, I fucked up. Right. You know, especially in a situation like this where it's like, it's so easy to put the blame on all the other, mm-hmm. you know, parties that also deserve blame. But I, j- I believe that if you don't use that footage in a promotional fight, it sets a whole different tone going mm-hmm. into this fight. That's not to say that if they didn't use the footage and Khabib did what he did anyway... Like it could have happened anyway because of what Connor had done and said and elicited out of his team. So I think it was just kind of ugly all around. I think after the bus incident, Dana was like, this is terrible. I'm shocked. And then he goes and uses it in the promo video. And you're like, okay, well, what is it? You know, like, mm-hmm. are you happy? Are you happy behind closed doors that this happened? Cause it's great for promo. Or are you actually pissed and shocked? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't. You know. I don't like seeing a, a UFC champion do act that sort of way. I think it's kind of foolish. It reminds me of like the early days of the UFC when it was for just sure. like a shit show. So I don't know. So That's okay. Like my, thing. my next question for you is: When we were sitting there watching Khabib jump the fence and start literally a brawl outside of the octagon, my first reaction was like, "Come on, dude! Like you're ruining it. Come on, fucking stop it!" But also, I thought that he was going to be arrested on the spot. Because he went out there, he punched somebody. Like, there's not going to be any belt. There's not going to, like, you, you That's literally... That's assault outside of a session Yeah, you literally event. just yeah. broke the law. Yeah. And I understand, like, Connor had done that to Jose Aldo, and he sort of got up in his face. But he never, like, threw punches or kicks in the audience. Right. He just charged at But, him. like, it's been done before that someone's jumped out yeah. of the octagon and sort of got people riled up. Yeah. But... N- has it happened in the UFC that someone has jumped out and just brawled? Because I've seen people jump into the octagon, including Connor, but that wasn't UFC. Was that no, the, Bellator? The, these have been other, yeah, other events have had this, like horrible things happen. Like, right. There's like Strike Force had it, like Bellator's had it, where just right. like, nonsense happens. Do you think, <clears throat> because I, I genuinely thought he was leaving in handcuffs, mm-hmm. like you can't do that. Yeah. And like the way that that could have escalated is just really terrifying. Yeah. Do you think that there should be consequences for what Khabib did? Um, and obviously it's up to the Nevada 
athletic commission or whatever to decide what happens to his title. But what do you think should happen to his title? Well, there's like what arena? Like in the law enforcement arena? Because if when you come to that, like, and do you think that they're separate? Yeah. I well, guess. yeah, they are definitely are separate. So what what happens? I think so. That um, Khabib's team got arrested. Like three of them got arrested. Right, and then Connor didn't want to press charges, so, so they got they, let go. Right, but also like I can't I can't say that that's a bad thing because Connor's in no position to press charges. No, and that's and Connor <laughs> and say what you will about Connor, he's a big talker, he's a big personality, but he always loses with class. He's never the guy who's gonna. He's never going to, you know, lose a fight and then cause a bunch of shit right on the spot. Yeah, he's going to internalize it and use it for the next rematch or whatever. But like yeah. he he's a classy fighter yeah. when he loses. And he was classy. He sat there. He well, took I think his... he's also just a little he's <clears throat> a little Irish street boy. Like somebody sucker punched me and I got ganged up on like I'm not going to press charges. Of course like, not. And like wild. Yeah. And like also like Connor as a honorable fighter he knows he lost the fight so right. what would he look like if he loses a fight and then presses charges well, against what the would he beat? look like if he <clears throat> loses and presses charges after all the people that he's sort of like exactly fucked with exactly. and fucked up Pot calling the kettle black yeah. i think what, what will happen and to kind of just close my argument here what will happen is the nevada state athletic commission who sanctions that fight in vegas will hand down the the punishment that they decide on for Khabib and his team, whether it's because his stripping, purse is already withheld. Yes, what his purse, his payment basically for the fight has been withheld. Um, so they'll determine the punishment. I don't know what it'll be. Re- revoking visas for future fights, taking the belt away, fining him, suspending him. Can they do that? Him. Can they revoke they can do all, a visa? They can do all of that. They can do all of it. They can prevent him from ever fighting in the U.S. or the Nevada state. Mm. state of nevada again which if you're banned from fighting in nevada like good luck in the ufc Mm -hmm. so they'll do whatever they're going to do then after that the ufc and who knows what goes on for that decision and who's involved i don't know but after that happens the ufc is going to take that they're going to follow that and kind of you know follow suit with it so if, if they if they say okay khabib can't fight for nine months or two years or 12 months because of what he did, Dana's going to be like, sorry, you don't get the title. We're not going to leave the title just vacant because he did this. Mm-hmm. You win you win this championship bout, you won the title, but then it was stripped afterwards. Mm. Um, that's, you know what I mean? I think we just got to wait. I think we just got to wait until the athletic commission speaks up. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, I do think it was exciting. I think it was, I think it got, it, it went too far and it sucked. But at the same time, it wasn't, you know, it could have been a lot worse, so. All right, my last <clears throat> question for you is in terms... Well, we were talking to Mark last night about Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah. And about how Muhammad Ali would bring a small gorilla with him and pretend it was Joe Frazier and call him a gorilla in mm-hmm. the 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. Do you think when promoting a fight that there should be things that are off limits that don't serve to promote a fight, like religion, politics, race, that kind of thing? I do. Like but, if you if you were holding a press conference and you were Dana White yeah. and you heard Conor McGregor or anybody basically just say like a racial slur yeah, yeah. or well not even at the press conference but on Twitter or on any number of something different about religion yeah. like do you think that that should be tolerated in terms of promoting a fight? I think the only th- I don't think it should be. I think there definitely should be a no no list to prevent things like this happening. Mm-hmm. Um, also, this should be used as an example. Like, hey, everyone's not like you. Okay. You grew up in the United States. You may have a certain way of shaking things off and doing it to promote a fight. But, dude, this guy's not like you. He's from a different part of the well, world. Connor's from Ireland. I, I'm just talking about the average UFC fighter. Oh, okay. Like pe- the, the precedence it's setting from last night. Mm-hmm. Like I think people just need to realize, first of all, that not everyone's like you. Not everyone takes things lightly and moves on. Like some people just don't do that. They're from a different place in, in the world and they just – they're different. Mm-hmm. Um I think if I'm Dana White, I think I take this opportunity to to put like a, a hammer down. No religious, no no sexual orientation, no you know, no comments like that. Just to just to try to do your best to prevent this. But at the same time, if someone does say that and they get fined for it, they're gonna eat that fine and get to the fight and whatever might happen might happen still. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like there's only so much you can really do, but I do think that there should be like sort of a code of conduct, a co- code of conduct for for pushing fights and promoting fights and building rivalries for the Yeah, audience. because like the best case scenario <clears throat> is that both sides, both parties are on board with the anything goes, we're just promoting a fight. And then at the end of the day, they both collect their paychecks and shake hands and move on. But like, that's just not 
the case. That's no. just not what we happens in night. real life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just asking in theory, do you think it's the responsibility of the organization to have some sort of guidelines? Yeah, like I do. That? I do. I just don't know how effective it could be, but it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think the UFC needs to step in and take, take a, make this into something that wasn't for nothing. Yeah. You know, but. Which yeah. could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Last question. <clears throat> Sorry. Do you think that Connor deserves a rematch with Khabib because he was finished? And if not, who would you like to see Khabib fight next? Deserves? It's like, what does that even mean nowadays? Do you think like, that the, he they deserves? Make... No, I don't. And or do you think that it will happen because of now the chaos that has ensued that would result in millions of dollars in pay-per-view money? I think there will be a rematch, yes. Um, I don't think, you know, on paper he would traditionally deserve a rematch given the fight, but he's Connor and he makes the, the organization more money than they've ever made by far mm -hmm. every single time he shows his face. So maybe it's not right away. Maybe they give Ferguson a shot. Maybe they put Ferguson with Connor. Maybe they put Pettis with Connor. Maybe Connor moves up or down. Who knows? They're going to figure out a way to keep Connor in the mix. And I do think eventually a rematch will happen. Yeah. I mean, I was exciting to see Connor fight. I missed watching him fight. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, uh, if you well, made it this far, I'm. Welcome to the Jenna and Julie podcast. Dink, dink. So um, I was looking for podcast ideas and I stumbled upon Rhett and Link uh, and their Ear Biscuits podcast. And I was scrolling through their episodes and I found one where they basically gave pretty goofy, you know, like lighthearted advice to people who have sent in issues that they have at their workplace. Um, and so I thought that could be fun to do in a very like light way. Like we're pretty much just going to meme it up here. There might be a couple pieces of actual advice you know spliced in here for you to take home and do what you want with but for the most part we i basically tweeted out from jen and julian what are some of you know the work the workplace issues that you deal with and would like advice on so here we are jen and julian are we are workplace professionals because we work in our own home we know all about the workplace <laughs> And we're going to give you some advice on some of your um, problems. Oh, work. boy. So here, here, here we go, right? Sure. Okay. And I'm going to keep it to first names only. We'll keep it to first names only so we don't get you in trouble. Okay. Heather says, I always have to take the trash out, but I'm little. And it's so hard for me to get the trash bags in the big trash can that the trash people come and empty. I always end up having to swing the bags to build up momentum and then fling them. How do I make it easier? That sounds like fun. Swinging the bags? I would turn it into a sport. That's not fun, Julian. <clears throat> I would turn it into a sport. Have you ever seen, um, what's that Olympic event where they spin around and then they let it go? I would do that. Except I would invite some of your coworkers down and I would put money on it. And then slowly, as the, the money pot builds up of their their money you know you're having them participate mm. then you slowly just like back your way out of it and then before you know it they're just competing throw trash in the bin and you're not even in the mix anymore you bring my your... no my solution for that is you got to build yourself a catapult you got to get a plank and put all the trash on one side with your back facing the dumpster jump on the plank as hard as you can and launch the trash into it so it goes over you or it goes, it goes it's over behind you, you. <laughs> What if it rains down trash juice and you're like, and then in slow motion, it's just like dripping trash juice into your face. It didn't, it didn't hurt your arms. Okay. So no catapult. No, okay. So that, pu pulley system, get a rope, like a bear trap, swing it up there and then just like snip your rope or some shit. I don't know. Figure out a mechanic to let go of the trash. Or you could go what? the Senor Lodenstein route. And you you oil up a path. Mm -hmm. You get like literal like 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 uh, in, what what do you call it? like um, industrial oil and just oil the the floor next to the trash and get a um, a cart and put the trash on it and make a little ramp at the end of the oil and just you're just gonna run as fast as you can and just shove it into the ramp and then the dolly will magically stop and the trash will just fly into mm -hmm. the trash bin. Mm -hmm. How about just like a step stool? Yeah, that's boring. <laughs> I personally think you, you should go with option number one. You start a trash throwing contest and there's money involved. 
Okay. You get people going, you get people excited, you create a Facebook group for it. And then all of a sudden by week three, they're down there gambling their money away to put trash into a bin and you're like relieved that's, of your responsibilities. I don't, I don't think that that's legal. Don't tell HR. Right. Okay. So this person, his name is Marissa. So my boss doesn't always tell me when I'm working until my shift starts. And then sometimes he barks. Then everyone keeps asking, where's Jenna? Not sure how to solve this. What a unique <laughs> situation. I've never heard of a situation like that. But it sounds tough. And I'm sorry that you're going through that. What I would recommend Gee, is Gee, that just, sounds like a mod from our Twitch stream. I would, <laughs> I would recommend trying to decipher the barks a little bit better so that you could just be on the same page with your boss who barks. Because maybe to the average ear, it sounds like a bark. But to the trained caring co-worker it might sound like a cry for help the end or you could just quit <laughs> or what what the hell kind of solution is that learn how to speak bark that's a good solution okay learn how to speak bark and then everyone keeps asking where's jenna I don't know how, I mean, maybe you just respond to people saying, who's Jenna? <laughs> and then just create a conspiracy that you don't know who Jenna is. Nobody knows who Jenna is. Oh. And then it's like the Berenstein, the, the Mandela effect, the Berenstein Bears thing, where it's uh -huh. like Jenna's suddenly not in the name of anything anymore. Mm. That's dark. It's quite the solution. Good swallow. I work at a pottery place. This is uh, Sydney. Okay. I work at a pottery place and we need customers phone numbers to call them with their pot when their pottery is ready for pickup mm -hmm. But people keep leaving support hotlines as their numbers. Please help Here's what I would do. What the hell really like people don't want their pottery picked up Okay, why don't you just ask for their email or something like that if they don't want to get called Or do they just not want their pottery in general? Like they just come in to paint it or do it and then they don't want to keep it I would. You can give them like an anonymous slip of paper like, hey, listen, I know you came here with your girlfriend because she fucking begged you to come. But if you don't want to keep this piece of shit fucking teacup that you just painted for three oh, hours, you just let shit. me know on this piece of paper by writing down a support hotline number and I won't fucking call you and I'm going to throw this thing straight in the trash. It's like a pottery safe word. I like that. But that's like a lot of words that you just said. So how are you going to communicate all that? Hmm. Oh, I know. It's in the... the you airdrop it to them. Yeah, okay. Airdrops or, is a solution to a lot of things. Or it's it's a note in the bathroom that's like hidden because the only time you would just like really go to the bathroom while you're doing pottery with your hands all covered in clay is if you're having a miserable fucking time and you do you, you have no intention of keeping whatever you're So you're going to go wash your hands and take a break from the misery you, that you're yeah, being subjected to. Yeah, and you see a little note that's like, hey, if you don't want to keep your teacup, just write down this number and... And I won't call you. Here's what I would do. What? That's a good one. I would take one of the defective pottery pieces that you're not going to use. No one's going to buy. You take it out to the back and you record a video of yourself stomping it in to bits while you yell curse words at it. And you keep that video. And anyone who sends you that or leaves their, that fake phone number, you email that video to them and say, this is what happened to your pottery piece because you <laughs> left me that phone number. And then they never come back. And you already got their money. Well, okay, yeah. Also, since you already have their money, you could take up your own sport, just like the trash sport, but like just take all the pottery that, oh, you left me a hotline number? Great. You add it to your collection and then you just go out on the weekends and you just throw them wherever the fuck you want for fun mm. with your friends. Mm. That's good. It's clay, right? That's good. Is it, if it's pottery, it's clay. So if you smash it in the ground, it's gonna decompose. It's not like you're littering. That's right? littering. Is it? That's littering. Truly littering. It's very littering. Oh fuck! I guess everything decomposes. My idea is flawed here. Hmm. Smash it and then sweep it up and throw it in the. Keep trash. the video of you smashing it just yeah. for for like blackmail purposes. Yeah. Right. Because uh -huh. you want to have power over these people who have come and terrorized your mm -hmm. workplace. Mm -hmm. So just keep that one on hand. You could add different filters to it to send to different people, you know, so it doesn't look the same. Mm -hmm. um, and then write a ransom note. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Brooklyn says, guys peeing on the floor in the shared bathroom. Hmm. Here's what I would do. I would um, 
put up a sign in the in the sh- well, shared bathroom, and I would it would say "Smile, you're on camera." In parentheses, stop peeing on the floor, <laughs> even though there's no camera. But then they're gonna think there's a camera. And then on the inside of every single stall, and on atop the the pee stalls, you put another sign that says, "Why'd you ignore the first sign? We're watching you." Winky face. I don't think I have a better solution than that. Honestly, a, just a sign that says "Smile, you're on camera" is completely terrifying. Yeah, or or you put up. A, I'd also be like, "Well, this is illegal." Or you do your best detective work. I don't know what this means, but try to figure <laughs> out who's doing it, and then send them a memo with CCing everybody and say, "Hey, I know it was you who peed on the floor. Could you stop?" Smiley face. Picture yeah. How do you know pee. these people are peeing on the floor? Is it like they're peeing pee on, the on the shower floor or like... No, it's a shared bathroom. So I'm sure it's like like guys like just they're missing. missing the toilet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, That's a thing. You I go see. to any dirty public bathroom, there's pee on the floor. Yeah. Or you secretly go to the janitor and pay him overtime. You say, hey, I want you to stay, I want you to stay in the bathroom all day today. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll pay you. I'm contracting you to do this. And he's the detective. No one's going to look twice at the, at the janitor in the bathroom, but he's secretly got his eye on you. So if he sees someone pee on the floor, one ounce of pee drops on the floor, he's there for it. He's going to remember those shoes. Oh my God. So then he's going to go around the office and look at all their shoes. And by process of elimination, he goes up to the guy where he found the shoes and he pees on his shoes. So you're saying that he's retaliating on this eye for person an eye, baby. For eye perhaps for an, an accident, eye. perhaps an accident by urinating on them. Eye for an eye. <laughs> oh my god! I can't think of a better way to get back at him. Okay. And then when the janitor gets fired, you say, "I'm really sorry. We really shouldn't have done that." <laughs> and then you put it on him. You say, "I don't know what you were thinking." <laughs> don't do that. Don't. What the don't fuck? do anything we're saying. <clears throat> Literally, don't do anything that we're saying. My boss has six to seven espresso shots every morning and therefore has crazy eyes and runs around the restaurant the <gasps> entire shift. How do I calm him? Oh Elizabeth my God. Says. Easy. Switch it out with decaf before he gets there. No. Why? Oh, that's cruel. Because some people are like addicted to caffeine. Yeah, this He'll guy like needs to, an intervention. Out. He's got crazy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a conducive work environment. What about every time he looks at you with crazy eyes, instead of listening to whatever he says, you just break out and singing some Enya. See if that'll calm him What's down. What's that? Every time he tries to talk to you, only time. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. I also think just switching it out with decaf would pretty much overall solve this whole problem. Maybe, brought, maybe figure out something that he likes. Maybe he likes small animals. You bring him a nice little. What is define crazy eyes animal. though? I don't know what that. Like he's just looking to yell caffeine at caffeine eyes. Just but like what is that? Like I have caffeine eyes, every day because I drink caffeine and I have eyes. So like, you know, what gives? What do you Find think? a way to melt him to his heart because no matter how caffeinated you are, if you're like melted, you still melt. Bring him a stuffed animal. Oh, I like him to, that. Tell him to take care of it. Bring him a stuffed animal. Bring him a. Bring him a stuffed animal, a Game Boy. Just say, hey. Oh, yeah, bring him a Game Boy. Go relax and sit outside. <laughs> and then while he's outside, just, just just smash the coffee machine to bits. Oh, Don't even switch broken. it out with decaf. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That was good. All right. <clears throat> Mac asks, every time I go to the water cooler, Karen is just one step ahead of me, and I feel like I can't dominate my conversations at work. What do I do? Good question, Mac. Julian. You sign up for the Skim newsletter. Julian. And right now you can do it for completely free. No charge at all. You just go to the skim.com. That's T-H-E-S-K-I-M-M, two M's.com slash Jen and Julian. Sign up. And then magically every morning you're going to have the skim newsletter with all the information about what's happening in the world. Easy, ready to read, conveniently at the top of your inbox every morning. So you can show up and say, hey, Karen, I found out what the fuck you're doing. And, and also reach out to the Skim customer service and try to unsubscribe Karen so you got that leg up. But regardless, you're going to be filled in with the Skim. Um, and when you sign up with the Skim.com slash Anna Julian, you're entered to win a $250 Visa gift card, which if you won, you could just buy your own cup water cooler so you don't have to deal with Karen at all. Because Karen is just a pain and she doesn't even work. She just stands at the water cooler all day. <clears throat> the Skim 
is really making it easier to live smarter every day. Um, all the top news stories, the things that you really need to know, curated for you in your email inbox every morning, completely for free. Um, everything that's going on, guys, like th you, things that you really don't want to miss, whether they're good, they're bad, you need to be in the know. You don't want to be at the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader <laughs> camp and not know what the Me Too movement is. You don't want to be anywhere and not know what that is, but you, it keeps you in the know and it'll make you the most educated person, including Karen, in your workplace. Go to T-H-E-S-K-I-M-M dot -M com slash Jenna Julian and sign up right now. It's completely free. Literally, just free. Okay. Also, guys, MeUndies, you already know how much I love MeUndies. I'm wearing them right now. I wear them all day, every single Same. day. Same. But did you know they have the most comfortable lounge pants and tees as well? MeUndies lounge pants are made of the micro modal fabric, which is three times hotter than cotton, just like their underwear. When you join the membership, you can get all this stuff, the lounge pants, tees, undies, everything they make, including the socks, which I love too. But you get it for less than everybody else because you're a member. Okay? MeUndies underwear are the softest things you'll wear. And fun prints that you can match with socks or even a bralette. I haven't worn one of those, but they look very comfortable. With their 100% satisfaction guarantee for some reason, if for some reason you don't love the, the whatever piece you buy from Andy's, they will return it. Uh, you can return it for 100% of your money so you don't lose out on anything. Also, guys, you get 15% off your first pair right now, literally right now, and free shipping by going to MeUndies. That's M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash Jenna Julian. Check it out. And then if you're looking for some clothes, maybe some jeans, some jackets, some hats, some shoes that me and he's couldn't uh, get for you, go to ThreadUp. What is ThreadUp? Well, they have all the best brands that you might like. Adidas, Free People, Gap, Lululemon. Guess. Guess what ThreadUp is. <laughs> ThreadUp is an amazing service that you can buy secondhand clothing in good condition for up to 90% off estimated retail price. You go to ThreadUp, that's T-H-R-E-D-U-P dot com um, slash Jenna Julian. And you will get an extra 30% off. So you're getting 90% off retail price and then another 30% off because you listen to us and you're smart and we love you. Uh, it's the perfect place when you're looking to update your wardrobe on a budget. There are so many awesome options as well as crazy deals going on at any given time. Uh, every item is in excellent condition and some even still have the tags on them. You'd be surprised at the selection you can find at this place. If you love to shop, you need to check out these deals right now on ThreadUp. Guys, check it out. Go to ThreadUp, T-H-R-E-D-U-P dot com slash Jenna Julian. Extra 30% off on top of the 90% off. I'm no mathematician. That sounds like 120% off. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're going to get paid to buy these clothes, but it's a lot off. Okay? A lot off. Thank you for that question, Mac. Wonderful question. Someone named Jake. Hmm. Asked, <laughs> when people run in the pool deck and don't listen and then they trip and hit their head how do i stop this also can i have nine hundred dollars i need it for a thing uh, <laughs> you cannot have nine hundred dollars for a thing so are i'm you assuming a, you're a lifeguard, lifeguard here yeah. yeah this this makes me think that you're a lifeguard what I think you should do... They're banned from the pool space. If they You don't run, get to run and then get to swim. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'm going to put my feet up here because Marvel's sitting on my lap because he doesn't feel good today. Okay. Here's the solution. Welcome okay? to my feet. Look no further, fam. You banned from the pool. Get no, out of the no, pool. No, no. They're gonna, Leave. They're going to put on a wig and come no, back in done. as a different disguise. You know how these, these people work, okay? Here's what you got to do. Before work one day, head over to Home Depot with the company credit card, not your own, okay? <laughs> Grab a bucket of the most cherry red paint you could find, Okay. Get to the pool early, spill the paint, splatter it, make it look like it was a big bloody accident, <laughs> and just put a little sign there, you know, the, the sign that sits like a little thing that says wet floor, except repaint that sign and says, a guy died here because he ran on the pool deck. Don't do it. You can oh be next. Oh my God. It's too much? I think it would be effective. If I was going to the public pool that day and I had my floaties and I was ready to go, mm -hmm. And I was ready to jump. I was ready to run along the side of the pool when the lifeguard wasn't looking, and I saw a big blood spill that had been so messy that it stained into cherry red paint that smelled like paint. I would not run. Mm. Yeah, you're not wrong. Or you could also get like a fire hose and bring it up to your lifeguard station, <laughs> Just, so that when someone starts running, you spray them with it so hard that they fall over, anyways, and, and hurt then... themselves. But then you're assaulting them via water hose. Mm, no, because you're a lifeguard and whatever you say goes. Oh, the law doesn't apply to lifeguards. No. I, heard. I read that one time but, yeah. in Lifeguards Digest. Yeah, you, and then you scream at them, it's my job to keep you safe. 
And then you jump off of the like the sixteen foot lifeguard tower and just keep <laughs> spraying them. Just get them good, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that would definitely show them between Julian's solution and mine. I th I think we have a non problem on our hands. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, Zoe asks, sometimes participants at the gym I work at take our walkie-talkies and keep them while they work out. A little confused by this. What walkie... First of all, what walkie-talkies do wait, you wait, have? Wait, 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 Read it over again. Participants at the gym I work at yeah. take our walkie-talkies and keep them while they work out. They keep them with them while they work out. So they like... My question is, what walkie-talkies do you have? Are people that work there? Like, if they work there... You no, participants. Have... Yeah, what does that mean? Like... Patrons, people who pay for a membership and go work out. I'm walk, assuming this is just like a normal square gym. up to them and go, give me that fucking walkie-talkie. No, there's a much better way to do this. Okay, you call the weirdest sex hotline you could find, turn on speaker, Julian. put the other walkie-talkie next to it. And so wherever they are, <laughs> they're going to get completely embarrassed in the middle of their workout. Right? It's a flawless solution. Thank you. Thank you. And then they'll never take it again unless they want, unless they liked it. That's Then you have a different problem. <laughs> You have a big different problem. <clears throat> My cubicle buddy farts loud and often. I've tried embarrassing him by asking him loudly and in front of people to cut it out, but it's not slowing down anytime soon. That comes from Allison. You could just get a gas mask. You work through that. Or you could buy a fart sound effect machine. And Plant. every time he farts, you fart louder? Yeah. Yes. Oh, there we go. No, here's what you do. You, what? you chum up the office manager who, mm -hmm. has, who has a connection to the intercom feature. And you hook up a fart machine to your desk. So you have the button on your desk, but every time you press it, a fart plays over the whole office. So mm -hmm. anytime he farts, you just fart for the office. Mm -hmm. So it's Until like everything's out of control. Then you're just living in a fart box. And then somebody's got to do something, but you know what? It's not you. And now the problem's bigger than you and out of your hands so you've basically not solved the problem but you've made it so it's not your personal problem anymore or do this every time they <laughs> fart the next to you just say this person farted <laughs> like really loud that's what he said he did he tried to embarrass him. no but like just like scream it this guy just fucking farted smell everybody he farted <laughs> Could you just like eat something that makes you fart a lot and then just try to do it back to him? <laughs> that's a good that's a good idea. But I don't know how closely you're in touch with your diet and your your body to know exactly what makes you fart. Or you could just get a stink bomb and just th destroy the you know, office. They have, like that fart spray or something that smells like fart. Every time he farts, you just like do one hot mist in the air, but you wear a gas mask. Oh, so oh, that you I can don't get your I job don't. done because you're doing. not getting fired. Here's what we're doing. What you put um, a megaphone under his chair mm -hmm. so that every time he no, farts, no, no, no. it's put amplified. a whoopee cushion under his chair. <laughs> well, they're essentially the same thing because you're just amplifying a fart noise. <laughs> one's real, one's fake. Or you could just put a whoopee cushion under your chair and fart spray. So every time he farts, you fake fart by sitting on the whoopee cushion and spraying fart spray. Mm -hmm. So you just you've engaged in a fart war now. And someone's going to come out on top and it's going to be you. Hey, you know what? That's good. You didn't start the fart war, but, but you you're finished gonna end it. it. Yes. Mm. I like it. I like you. Thank you. Uh, Chelsea asks, having people giggle as I say the infamous line, hi, welcome to Chili's. So I'm guessing you're a greeter wow. at Chili's or a host. Adam really ruined your life, huh? <clears throat> I think you got to dress, dress up as him every day. Or, or, I know, I know, very easy solution. Hmm. You have a vine playing on a loop, um, like on the little podium mm -hmm. when you walk in, so that you go like this, you go, and then you press play, and it does it for you. And then, like, you just carry an iPad and play that. No, vine? you mount it to the podium. Mm, okay. Or you strap it to your chain, so you have a chain with an iPad, and you go up to people and you just press play, and it says, "Hi, welcome to Chili's." Or you could walk up to the table, say, "Hi, welcome to Ch Chili's." Like start blowing your vape smoke out on the table and have like ask one of them to blow it out and then look at him and go, Adam. And then now that everyone's laughing, you can take their order. Yeah. So you start with the vine joke, even mm -hmm. though it's your job to say hi, welcome to Chili's. But then you continuously like bombard them with more vines. Yeah. Or you could tell your boss that you're now becoming a professional Shakespeare impersonator actor. You just start dressing like you're from another century and go... Hello, dost thou feel welcomed in Chili's? 
<laughs> so you say it in Shakespearean? Something like that. Just, mm. just you could, or, oh, ooh, ben, bienvenidos a Chile's. Pretend that you speak Spanish. You mean just speak Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> you, you just do it. Uh, this person named Jason said, I play games with my coworker and he always takes my loot. He also always throws these stun grenades at me after he locks me in a shed. Honestly, I'm not sure if I should be upset. What do you think? That sounds like a horrible situation. Wow, that sounds like Jason Sully and it sounds like he's talking about playing with you. God, I would quit. I would I would find new teammates because it doesn't sound like that guy's going to ever stop because it's probably way too funny. You're a bully. <laughs> it's way too funny. <laughs> what you just described is hilarious. <laughs> I'm not helping you with your problem. Oh. Lauren says, I have a similar coworker. He also takes my loot and pretends to drop items for me while driving. I think this is microaggressions, but HR won't listen. What should I do? Lauren. Yeah, I gathered that much. Oh. They're talking about playing PUBG. Oh, sorry. Are you over the joke? Is that what's happening? My bad. I'm a lecturer in class. B says, I'm a lecturer in class, so having students on their phones is a problem. Here's what you do. You go airdrop home Airdrop them all. You, you, get, you prepare a picture that you're going to just airdrop relentlessly to everybody. Okay. Um, and then you just airdrop it. The end. And the airdrop message says, I see you on your phone. Look up right now. Come catch these else, hands. Yeah, or else <laughs> you're getting an F. Just threaten your students. Forget the airdrop. Just bring a weapon and... No, no, don't. <laughs> My God! No, I just meant like an axe or something. Just carry it over your shoulder. Just walk around. Like pace the, and pace you the projector. And airdrop them a message that says, hey, look, at, look up at the front of class. Just flip the axe up on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Dress as, a, dress as a, a lumberjack. Grow a beard. Or put a fake one on. And just like... Oh, do the thing with that serial killers do and just like scratch it against the wall so it mm. makes this really loud noise. Yeah. Or Teach you can, your lesson while you do that. Or you can just, you know, airdrop them pictures of like Nick Cage over and over and over again. But what if they turn their airdrop off? Is there a way to like override someone's airdrop and just force all airdrops on? Because if there are, you should hack their phone so the airdrop's all, all the way on and then just drop them viruses onto their phone. Mm-hmm. I feel like my my actual answer to that is like that sucks and that's that makes your job frustrating. But also, a it could be a person's learning style that some, having something <clears throat> tactile actually helps them learn better, even yeah. though they could possibly be very distracted. But also, like, why do you give a fuck? Like, if they're gonna fail the classes, depending how old they are, well, if they're in high school, then yeah, that's yeah. But a, a college—it sounds like a college lecturer because she said lecturer. Mm -hmm. My thing is like, I get why you would be like, I get. That their destiny is in their hands. If they're not going to pay attention, take notes, they're going to fail, whatever. But at the same time, if you care about what you're lecturing, like it, it is annoying to have people just on their phones. Yeah, it sucks. So I would honestly, the most embarrassed I've ever been in a class at any sort is like I've been caught on my phone and then the I'll, I'll get made a, an example of. Like my teacher or professor will like stop everything till it's like dead quiet. And then I all of a sudden realized that everyone's looking at me and then I literally never did it again. So I would do that, but I would up it one to where I would, the moment you see someone on their phone, you hold up a sign to everyone who's actually looking at you and say, hey, everyone else, get on your phones and look at them right now. And then the professor, you get on your phone and look at it. And then everyone's just, wait, that doesn't solve anything. Now everyone's what on their the phone. Hell? I will say, so when I was in college, I didn't have a laptop and many, many, many students did not have laptops. Like I had a desktop computer. <clears throat> yeah. And so every time I would go to class, I would have my notes. So there is no like looking at my phone. There's no looking at my laptop. But I feel like nowadays it's very common for people to take notes on a laptop or an iPad or something like that. So mm -hmm. like, what's the difference to you if someone's looking at their phone or their laptop? Chances are they're both just fucking looking at something that has nothing to do with the class. So if you envision that their phone is really just their laptop, they're just dicking around too. You know well, because, I mean? yeah, they're taking notes on the laptop or they're not at all or they're doing both. But it's their it's their funeral, so. Yeah, when I was in school, I, I didn't have that. So I just sat there terribly alert <laughs> and listening. Nice. It all went into my brain, all of it. 
Uh, Holly says, not knowing how to gently explain to my coworker that the sleep lotion from bed ba- from Bath and Body Works doesn't actually make you go to sleep. <laughs> like she doesn't get that it's not medicated <laughs> and is concerned whenever I use it. I just like lavender. Here's what you do. You make sure she's looking one day. Take some sleep lotion. Rub it on your hands. Julian. And then just pass out. Pretend to like <laughs> fall uh, like directly on the floor and just pretend like you're asleep. And then wake up like two hours later and be like, oh my God, that was such a good nap. Yeah, it requires you to performance act for Yeah, two you have hours. to performance act like you're asleep. You know, um, but that'll do her. And then that that actually might per- perpetuate it worse because then she's going to want to keep you away from it more. Mm. Just change the label. Put a new label on top of the sleep lotion and, sit and just write awake lotion. Mm-hmm. And then take it and then all you got to do is be really energetic. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good one. Okay. Good stuff. All right. By the way, don't do anything we told you to do. <laughs> Any of you. This is horrible advice. <clears throat> I think this is a good one to end on. 95% of my coworkers are religious, and I feel like I have to tread lightly. Help. Uh, Lencia. Cosplay as Jesus Christ and go to work like that. That is the worst. Cosplay is Jesus Christ. Advice I've Just ever heard. Just like Michael heard. did in the office. Just cosplay as Jesus. He did that in the office? Yeah. He 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 dressed up as Santa, uh-huh. but then Phyllis was Santa, so he got really upset. Uh-huh. So he turned the Santa outfit inside out and turned <laughs> turned it into a, a Jesus outfit, basically. Uh-huh. And he took the mustache on. It was just a white beard, and he was, in his words, he was hurt, petulant Jesus. Be hurt, so, petulant what, what, Jesus. What were the results of him... Dressing as Jesus in a workplace. I don't think it really ever got that far with HR. I think they kind of just dropped it. What were his coworkers' reactions? Very, very upset. Yeah. <laughs> it was very negative. So how is this a solution? Well, it's a solution for you, Lencia, not them, right? You're looking for a solution. Solution. Mm-hmm. You, not them. Mm-hmm. Just cosplay as Jesus when in doubt. What if, what if they're not Catholic or Christian or anything? Jesus. What if they're all Jewish? Cosplay is Jesus. You think that would go over well? I don't think there's anything remotely bad that could happen from cosplaying as Jesus in an overly sensitive <laughs> religious work environment. Wow, Julian. And then just walk around saying, what would I do? <laughs> this is not You're good. You're going to get so fired, it's Julian, not. and everyone's going to be pissed. This is how to get fired in under an hour with Jenna and Julian. Oh my god oh boy what priceless advice that was Hmm. well uh, for those of you who are expecting like more serious advice a i'm sorry but b i'm also like not sorry because if we gave you that advice it might have been bad and who knows you might have like taken it and gone fired and then blamed us i don't know that would have sucked um i know there were a lot of people asking like advice like you know i'm young for my position a lot of my peers are older than me and they talk down to me and stuff like that like a lot of that shit's just tough, man. And people are like really shitty when mm-hmm. it comes to the workplace because they feel entitled based on age or whatever it might be. And I think that like, you know, just as cheesy as it sounds, just really just kind of staying focused and, you know, keeping your head down and doing your work and not really minding the people around you. It's very difficult to do, but yeah. it's like probably some of my best advice. And, and also like there's some advice of like, you know, um, <clears throat> I show up early and and I get work done, whereas my coworkers show up directly on time and don't do anything extra. I would just say like, you know, be a little selfish, you know, do your job and take care of your responsibilities in a good way that you think your superiors would like. But at the same time, if you see that you're doing something that is really just kind of like aggravating you because no one else is participating in it, then just like self-preservation, you know? Yeah. Don't kill yourself to, to do extra work when it's just not really cared about. I mean, I was always that person that was doing some extra work depending on the job. You know what I mean? And and it is definitely aggravating and unfair when you think about how unbalanced that is or like how you care so much about your job and it seems like the other people around you get away with the bare minimum and don't care. Mm -hmm. And that's really frustrating. But like, if anything, what you get to take with you for the rest of your life is your work ethic, you know? That's true. Like you may not be currently rewarded for the way that you're behaving at your job, but in the future you will. And the future that it will get you farther than the people that show up and do nothing and care and don't care. You know what I mean? Totally. So don't let that discourage you enough to where you change your work ethic, but also 
finding a, a happy medium that keeps you sane is also important. Like totally. if you're breaking your back to do something without anyone rewarding you for that or caring that you do it, like you think about the workhorses that you know of our friends and us and people where it's like you can work at the same job for 10 years. So where you are the workhorse and people just genuinely start to take advantage of you. You're not getting paid your yeah. fair amount. Yeah. Like you're just, you're doing everything all the time <clears throat> and like no one has your back. There's no promotion. There's, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 10 yeah. fucking years. Like, yeah. you know, you need to stand up for yourself. You need to look out for your sanity, but don't let the actions and attitude of others, even if that's your boss, influence your future work ethic or current work ethic, but do take care of yourself and keep your sanity. Great advice. All of it. Great advice. And I think there's like, <clears throat> there is a point of realizing that you're, it's time to move on because you've given so much to a company or you, you do work so well, but you feel like nobody is appreciating it and you're getting false promises. Or you have more to offer than <clears throat> what you're being, exactly. you know, you're <clears throat> like, I started here when I was 20 years old and yeah. I'm 30 now and I don't want to do busy work anymore. Yeah. You know? And with that said, like if you haven't reached that absolute point yet, like realize that like there are benefits, even if they're not readily apparent, mm -hmm. there are benefits to, you know, doing the, the extra work and going the extra mile and actually showing people that you care because what might even happen, you know, regardless of if you get a promotion or whatever, you might just come across someone who's like you, you know what I mean? By doing that work or showing interest in work that, uh, that you may not yet have responsibility for, you never know who, what kind of person you're going to meet who might appreciate that in you. And maybe you'll get a friendship out of it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but it sounds like you guys have a pretty solid handle on your workplaces. And if you don't, well, now you do. <laughs> now you definitely don't. Don't, don't I see y'all out here building trash catapults and shit. Dude, start a betting ring around the trash dumpster and you're just going to make money and it's just... just <laughs> Get arrested. It's going to be fine. Don't even worry about it. Thank you guys for listening to the podcast. We appreciate you sending in your questions and I hope you enjoyed listening to us give you bad advice about your workplaces yeah we'll see you guys next week on jenny julian podcast have a wonderful week and goodbye bye